The stage ought to be here any minute now, Obi. Maybe I had nowhere to go. Now, Obi, you gotta. Uh, but Walter, don't you worry none about Walter. You can tell he's as excited as he can be about you getting to make the trip. Sure is, ain't he? Maybe if I hold off the spring, that Walter will feel like going with me. Obi, you're gonna have to quit putting this off. How long's it been since you've seen your sister anyhow? Well, let's see. Uh, spring of 43, make it now only 16 years. 16 years, and, you, and you're still trying to put it off. Well, what in the tarnation she expect? She's moved 40 miles away. Hold it. Is that all being horse cart right? Yeah. Listen, maybe we ought to go over Yeah? There. And what? Well, you ain't forgot what they done to us, have you? That ain't likely. I also ain't forgot they can throw you in jail for jumping a man in broad daylight, either. Well, it here don't figure things like that out. Cause he got nothing to figure with. Oh, yeah? Well, I figure I can take you anytime. Yeah. <laughs> now, look what you've done. <laughs> you just took it. All right. <laughs> I'll break the two of you. <laughs> Just enjoy yourself. Don't you worry about nothing. Old Walter's gonna love Ponderosa. Don't forget the music. Well, I don't know about that, Obi. I, I ain't much on that music. Walter's plumb crazy about the low notes. Yes? I'll try. Hey, here's your... Hey, Obi, what's in there anyhow? Beans, boy. Don't you remember them with the special seasoning? There's plenty more stored in the cabin. Help yourselves if you and Walter have a mind to. Oh, no. No, we we'll thank you anyhow. Thanks a lot. I declare, boy. With your peculiarities about vittles, I don't hardly see how you got as big as you are. Well, so long, huh? So long, Pete. There you go. Tito! Tito! Looks like old Obi is going somewhere. Figured that out, did you? Well, ain't he getting away? Yeah, Macy. Ain't he getting away? Oh, he ain't getting away. He left that mud here, didn't he? Yeah. Well, that means he's coming back. Well, what I gotta figure out is just what kind of trouble he's coming back to. Start digging those post holes early tomorrow morning. Well, Paul, we can't do that. Why not? Well, it's gonna rain. Who says so? Walter. All you gotta do is look at Walter. Oh, come on, Oz. You're not Obi. You're not gonna take that doc seriously. All you gotta do is live with him for a while. Yeah, he's the greatest excuse you ever had for not working. Me and Walter went into town for the supplies, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you brought back half the stuff we needed. Well, if I'd have brought it all back, I wouldn't have had room to cram water on the wagon. Hoss. Did you enjoy the ride with Walter? Well, uh, well yes. Yeah, sort of pleasant. 
Then enjoy digging those post holes tomorrow morning. In the rain? Oh, come on. It hasn't rained for two months. And it ain't likely to rain for another two months. I mean, Paul, listen, all you gotta do is, is look at Walter over there. Now, you see how that hair sort of swirls around there on his back? That's the surest kind of a sign. As a matter of fact, might even get a little thunder and lightning. What thunder and lightning? Come on, this time of year. Now, Hoss, I, I don't want to appear unreasonable. But I'm running this ranch, not that dog's hair. Oh, of course you are, Paul. I ain't trying to get out on no work. Well, you dig post holes. Earlier. Well, that'll have snow. Yeah. Well, I'll keep an eye on you, boy. If it does, me and Joe will get the stock in. I got a good bet. Yeah. Me and Walter, too. Night, Paul. Yeah. Night, Paul. Uh, Adam. You wouldn't mind exchanging bedrooms with me for a few days, would you? Oh, well, why do you want my room? Well, Walter's accustomed to a sleeping room with a southern exposure. Well, I guess I'm rugged enough to sleep in a room without a southern exposure. Uh, little brother, uh, you're gonna have to have a quilt for your bed. No, I got a quilt on my bed. No, no, you ain't. I, I put it on the floor for Walter. Why my quilt? It's the warmest quilt in the house. I know. That's why I picked it. Yeah. Well, me and Walter's got to turn in. Where did you get that thing? Uh, this is a... It's a horn that Obi left for me. He, uh... He wants me to play a few low notes for Walter every night before he goes to bed. It makes him relax so he can sleep better. Relax? Relax him? I haven't seen that animal upright or with his eyes open yet. Well, he stands up and opens them every once in a while when he's eating. You don't say. Now, you watch your fun at him. Walter's a very sensitive dog. Besides that, he's, he's our house guest. Yes, I know. He's sleeping in my room. Yeah, on my quilt. He's right. I, I think we should apologize. Oh, that ain't necessary, little brother. Walter don't mind a little funny. Ain't he a pure joy? Come on, Walter. <laughs> What are we doing living here in Obi's cabin? If we had to depend on your figuring, we'd be living in a shack the rest of our lives. Now, why don't you just shut up and leave the figuring to Macy? Well, if it was up to me, I'd just go right on out and I'd shoot that horse. And then I'd wait for Obi to come back and then I'd shoot him too. And then you I'd just go right over to the Ponderosa and shoot horse, huh? Even if it weren't stupid, you couldn't hit the side of a barn with a cannon. Huh? Well, would you like to try me, Teague? Huh? Uh, you boy? Uh, I I learn how to act at a business meeting. The business at hand. The job we came here to do, find Obi's gold. Have you ever got that? But Obi put that gold in the bank. That's the gold he had. Now, I figure there's a lot more gold around here somewhere, and with Obi out of town, now's our chance to find it. 
Oh, we ain't no miners. How are we gonna find a gold vein? I tell you, we should have got Obi alone and choked it out of him. Yeah, but he ain't never alone. He's always got that miserable dog hanging around, advising him. A dog advising him? Well, now, that ain't the limit. But you heard Obi saying it all the time himself. Many's the time you heard him. Sure I have. But he's got to be crazy to say it. And you've got to be crazy to believe it. You calling me crazy? I ain't never been a man to back away from a fact. Oh, sit down. I've been thinking about what Willard just said. Did it strike you that Obi's extra brainy? Ain't you heard a word I've been saying? He don't make no more sense than a bath in the wintertime. We ain't never got the best of him yet, have we? That's cause he's been just plain lucky. Mighty lucky, wouldn't you say that? Yeah, mighty lucky. Yeah, the man that lucky has to have a powerful lucky piece. <laughs> yeah. You know how I got it figured? Walter's Obie's lucky piece. Yeah. You know what we're gonna do about it? We're going to change our luck and get even with them at the same time. Ain't nothing wrong with the idea, but how you aim to manage it? Well, we're going to dog nap Walter. And we'll let him advise us for a change. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How much longer you figure we're gonna have to wait around here? Ain't no telling. Maybe they won't let Waller out at all tonight. They gotta let him out. It ain't tidy otherwise. Well, I wouldn't have waited this long for the prettiest gal in the territory. Shows you the difference between love and money, don't it? Well, at least waiting for gals ain't so cramping. I ain't so sure I can straighten up when the time comes. Oh, I got a cure that'll straighten you up. Let me be, Tig. Let me be. Cut it out now. Come on. Doors open. Let me know when you get ready to come back in. Come on. Will you be quiet? You want him to hear us in there? What are we waiting for, Missy? Ain't no sense in catching him before. Before what, Macy? <laughs> yeah, you got a point, Macy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Give me those meat scraps. Give me those. You, Walter. You, Walter. Nice dog. Come on, Walter. Good boy. Come on, nice puppy. Come on, come on. Get ready, you two. Come on, Walter, nice boy. Come on, nice boy. That's a good boy. Get him! No! I didn't mean to take it. <laughs> You're always hitting me. Always hitting me. Oh, you man. No! No! You bonehead! Leave me mean alone. It. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, you won't get a head playing around on a job. <laughs> Where's the dog? Come on, Walter.
Hey, don't it seem like Walter's been gone an awful long time? Well, actually, I hadn't noticed I was so stunned by your practicing. Yeah, Walter loves them low notes, too. I think I'll go out and call him. practicing and didn't like the tune. Walter likes the low notes. He'll be back when he gets ready. Oh, aren't you even worried about him? Walter? Joe, Walter takes very, very good care of himself. Well, I think I'll turn in. Now, hold on there. You gonna go to bed? You're responsible for that dog. Oh, Paul, it ain't like I don't trust him. Well, that's not the point. The point is, are you gonna let that Poor dog stay outside all night? If, if he wants to. You know, Bob, after all, Walter ain't no puppy. <laughs> He's gonna make us rich. How? How, how, how? By finding us a gold mine, just like he did for Obi. Well, how do you figure on making him go about it? Well, we give him a pouch of gold, let him take a sniff, and then just turn him loose. It's all there is to it. Oh, it's as easy as pie. Then all we have to do is start digging. Digging? Digging? Yes, digging. With shovels? Well, we ain't got paws. Oh, oh I, I've never been too overly fond of digging. Listen, why can't we just rob the bank and take the gold that's already been dug? Why can't we do that? I could give you as high as three or four reasons, but I'm going to give the both of you the main one. We may get shot at. Oh, well, that's just because folks ain't overly fond of having their banks robbed. Now, you got to expect that, Macy. No, not anymore. We won't even have to dodge one bullet. Thanks to Walter here. Now, let's get something to eat and get some sleep. We got a rough day ahead of us tomorrow. Clean up the cards. Sure glad we found this pot of Obie's beans. No! Otherwise, one of you'd have been going back to the shack for supplies. Ah, get your hand out. I gotta feed Walter first. He needs a lot of pet tomorrow. Now. Ah, good boy, Walter. Ah. Some manners. All you two thinks about your own selves. You know, there's nothing I like better. Oh, 
hardly took you no time at all. Ain't there an off chance he could be making a mistake? No, sir. And we're gonna start right here. Why can't we just rob the bank like everybody else does? Yeah. I ain't never been overly fond of digging. And I ain't overly fond of getting shot. What's the matter with you meatheads, anyway? Well, don't it strike you that digging's mighty close to hard work? Us mine owners don't look at it that way. Mine owners? Well, well we figure that mine owning ain't much better than robbering. Yeah? I see. Yeah. Well, we ain't gonna stand here and argue about it. Now, there's gold in the ground there. We're gonna get it. Now, get those shovels down and start digging. Well, listen. Dig! <laughs> Oh. Well, it off. Come on, cut it out. What do I do? What do I do, Macy? I... This mine and serious business. Now, just start digging. I know. Macy, you hit pay dirt? No. I'm quitting. You're quitting? For what? I'm plumb tuckered out. All right, tickle dig again for a while. No, I won't. I'm as tuckered out as he is. You can't quit now. According to my calculations, we're just about ready to strike that main vein. You've been calculating your calculations for hours, Macy. Well, it must be a different kind of dirt than I figured on. Hard dirt does take a mite longer. Oh, it was a crazy notion to begin with. I'm ready to call the whole thing off. Yeah, let's call the whole thing off. You mean you ain't gonna dig no more? Not another shovel full. I'd rather rob the bank. You'd rather get shot. I'd rather shoot myself. Well, if you want something done right, there's only one thing to do about it. Do it yourself. Let's go back to the cabin. Anybody seen anything of water? No, no, not a, not a thing. Imagine that rascal. Staying out all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he better be through his car locking before Obi gets back, eh? <laughs> yeah, Dad, burn it, Obi gets back today. Oh, today? Yeah. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna eat breakfast. I'm starving. Any other time, this much supplies will last us a month. Now we'll be lucky to get through the week. I ain't never seen a critter eat so much in all my born days. What I'm worried about is if there's enough money in that bank to show a profit after we get through paying for Wallace Vittles. Willard. Yes. What did you do? Oh, cut out, you two pigs. Shut up! I do? Hey. Lost card right. You don't reckon he's looking for us, do you? Ain't no reason why he should. And what's he doing in town? Well, Van, I'd say to meet that stage coming on. Howdy, Obi. Sure good to have you back. 
You're a sight for sore eyes yourself. Yeah. Well, it looks like that trip done you some good. Well, I got to admit it did. Uh, where's Walter? Well, over here, he ain't to be found. Took off, did he? Last night. Ain't he the racy devil? Hey, what's them scalawags doing in town? I don't know. From the looks of them, they must have took up honest work. I ain't never seen nobody that played out. I'm just as glad to see him. Now we can move back to our own shack. Yeah. And we can get back to robber in the bank, too. It'll be a pleasure to get back to clean work instead of playing around digging tunnels. You're both wrong. What do you got in mind? The way I figured, there's no sense of beating our brains out trying to rob that bank. We'll let Obi get the money out of the bank for us. Well, you must have stayed in that tunnel too long, Macy. All that dirt and all going up your nose, it'll clog up your thinking. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my thinking. Obi will be more than glad to get that money for us. We're going to hold Walter for ransom. Ransom? Yeah. What's that, Macy? I had some good news for you, but Walter's still missing. Well, Walter ain't missing. Well, where do you think he is? Uh, I know where he is. He's out frolicking. See, Paul, ain't no use in us getting all cut up about it. Obie will just stay here with us till Walter gets back, that's all. Well, then you're sure he's coming back? Always has. Well, we've got nothing to worry about, then. You just stay here until he gets here. Well, that's mighty nice of you, but I reckon it won't be too long. Hmm. Yeah, Obie, how long does Walter generally stay out on one of these, these little deals? Well, it differs. I mind once, Walter went romancing, he's gone for a whole week. Well, tell me, isn't it just possible that uh, Walter might run into the right kind of gal dog one of these times and never come back? Me and Walter's natural bachelors. There ain't no gal dog Ben Barnes can separate me and Walter. Oh, I see. Well, then I suggest that we, uh, we go inside and uh, wait. How much money you re How much money you reckon we ought to ask for? Why don't you just ask for the moon? We got as much chance of getting it. There ain't nobody crazy enough to pay us real money for a dog. Obi is, after all, Walter's valuable. For what? Well, there's some things you just can't pinpoint, Willard. Especially if they ain't there. What's the matter with you, Tig? Don't nothing satisfy you around here lately? That's because we ain't done nothing right around here lately. We've been working ourselves to the bone, digging holes, stealing mutts, and we ain't made a dime. That sounds pretty close to right, Macy. Fact is, where that hound eats, we're a sight worse off than when we started. Oh, now you're gonna stand there and fuss over a little grub, and we got a chance to make a fortune. A little grub? Walter has got a right smart appetite, you know. Yeah, and lucky for us, he has. Ain't nobody gonna pay 10000 for a sick dog. 10,000? Yeah, that's what I decided. <laughs> We're figuring by the foot. That is from here to here to here to here. Walter should be worth about. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Walter's nose is hot. Of all the dirty tricks, he eats every blessed thing in the territory, and then when we're ready to cash in, he ups and kicks off. Nobody kicks off around here unless I say so. You hear me? More likely an upset stomach. Or the gout. Willard, get the water. All right, we'll take care of you. Keep up these treatments. I'll finish this ransom. Counting the one on the end. How many E's in the word dear?
D E R E. Too bad the rest of your family missed it. Yeah, well, they, they're gonna eat in town on account of they got such a late start, see? That, that hop sing some cook. Yeah. I never figured I'd take such a shine to Chinese grub. Uh, what was that we had? That was roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, Obi. Did you hear that? At the front door? Yeah. Bet you that's that, that water. You, Obi. Well, ain't that nice. Ain't had a letter since I don't know when. Hey, well, that, that didn't come in the mail, Obi. Well, hand carried. Now, I wonder who'd want to get in touch with me that bad. Do you reckon it's from a sister? Well, I don't know. You could you can always open it and find out. It ain't signed. Dad, Barney, go ahead and read it. What's it say? It says if I want to get water back. I gotta pay ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars? Did you ever hear the lack of it? I sure ain't. Me neither. Walter's worth a heap more than that. You ain't gonna give him that ten thousand dollars. I sure am. I just hope Walter don't find out how little they ask. Well, be that's crazy. It's just like dumping good money right down a well. Besides, you ain't got no guarantee they'll deliver Walter back to you even if they get the money. No, sir, what we gotta do is, is outsmart them, that's what. I don't know, Hoss. If Walter ain't outsmarted him, I don't know how we can. Let me see that letter, Obi. Says here you gotta leave that money at the end of Oak Canyon by noon tomorrow. Well, that gives us plenty of time. Come on, Obi. Heads were supposed to stay here and look after Walter while I delivered that ransom note. Now, what have you been doing? You delivered the note already? Yeah, I left it on the door. <laughs> you know, this beats that robber in a mile. You better tell him. You tell him. You was in on as much as I was. But you thought of it. Well, somebody better tell me something. Now, what have you two been up to? Macy, we always stuck by, ain't we? Through thin and thick. So? So, Will and me figured that nursemaid and critters ain't got nothing to do with outlawing. It ain't fitting. So? So we let them loose. Is that all? Is that, that all? all? Loco Macy. What have you gone and done with him? Who? Walter. Ain't he here? You know he ain't here. <laughs> Honest, Macy, we ain't done nothing. We ain't moved all night, Macy. You sure? I'm sure, Macy. He's gone. He gone. Walter's gone. I ain't never seen nobody act like that. He ain't moved for the most part of two hours. Sure is taking it hard. Plum pitiful, ain't he? Sure is. Why don't we put a cold rag on his forehead? That pepped up Walter. Oh, no, that's the cure for a hot nose. I ain't sure it's gonna work on Macy. How about a mustard plaster? No, that's for wheezing your chest. You can see for yourself he ain't wheezing. Hey, you don't like none of my ideas. Well, why don't you think of one yourself? No sawbones. I'm an outlaw. 
How about some castor oil? Castor oil? Yeah, if it was one thing my mama set store by, it was castor oil. No matter what ails you. You got any? I ain't never without any. He don't look like he's ready to take none of this now, though. We'll have to give it to him. I'll hold him when you pour, all right? All right. What are you knuckleheads think you're doing? Doctoring you. Doctor me for what? For what ails you? You've been acting mighty strange lately. I've been thinking. Thinking? We didn't have no way of knowing that, Macy. We were just trying to help. Don't you think you ought to told us something about it, Macy? All right, all right. I'm thinking how to get Walter back. Won't you just try a little of this stuff? You sure we're doing the right thing? Absolutely, Obi. Why, with all these traps we got set around here, if them, if them fellas even try to get close to that, that ransom box, why, we're bound to get them in one of these. Now, that ain't what I'm worried about. What are you worried about? It's Walter. If he suspected we was laying all these traps and all, instead of paying the money for him, he might get upset. Don't you worry. Go get that ransom box. Now, put it over there on that ledge and be careful when you walk between that tree and that rock so you don't get in one of our traps. Be careful! <laughs> How is he? Fine as frog's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like our troubles are all over. <laughs> I ain't so sure. I still think we ought to get out of that dog business altogether. Yeah, Macy, why can't we just go back to plain outlawing? Because you have to finish what you start. Otherwise, it makes for bad habits. Maybe, but I don't... No maybes about it. All I have to do is go out and pick up our money. You ain't going out in the daytime. In the daytime, Macy? Somebody's bound to see you in the daylight. In the daytime? There ain't nobody gonna see me. I got it all figured out. A roundabout way nobody can follow me. Now you two stay here and watch Walter. I don't trust him. He might just grab that money and keep on going. You stay here with Walter. Shorty. Sure, <laughs> He don't trust him. You stay here with Walter. Stupid. <laughs> 
Right down the well. Oh, that Walter's got an evil mind. What are we gonna do now? We're gonna get it out. With what? Well, we gotta have something long and slim and... <laughs> no, no, Macy. I... Macy, I... Macy, I... I... Macy, I, I can't swim. It's gone. How'd they get through them traps? I knew Walter would like this. Come on, come on, you lunkhead, you're heavy. Willard is dizzy from the blood running to his head. Well, tell him to stop getting dizzy and grab that box. Macy says stop getting dizzy and grab the box. <laughs> What'd he say? He needs about another foot. What does he think my arms are made of, rubber? All right, I'll, I'll scrunch down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> stupid can you get is to run into your own trap? You're running right along behind me. You hanging here beside me, ain't you? I told you it was a bad idea. We... That burn it, Obie. I can't figure out how they got to that ransom box without first getting in one of these dang traps. Maybe Walter helped him. Now, why would he do a thing like that? Because we just didn't pay him the money. He ain't that kind of dog. Uh, he can get mean when his feelings is hurt. Obie, I'll bet you fool Walter knew the predicament we was in right now. He'd be right here to help us, just like that. Fire and dry out this money. I gotta dry myself out first, Macy. Hey, Teague, you like to drown me when you come a crashing down on top of me like that. How do you think I felt with Macy on top of me? He's heavier than I. Oh, stop the yapping and build a fire. Why don't you spread it around and dry it that way? Yeah, Macy, spread it around. Get the wood and build a fire. Newspaper! Newspapers? Drew, I quit. I don't want any more to do with it. What do you mean? I am quitting this outlaw business. Macy, you mean you're turning honest? Yes. 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 See? Castor oil. <laughs> You think you could manage to play chess with your feet on the floor? Oh. I'm getting worried about Hasanobi. I think we ought to go out looking for him. You sure they didn't tell you where they went? Oh, he told you they were flying in and out of here today like they were on some kind of a secret mission for the governor. But doing what? Doing what? Oh, they didn't say, Pa. They, they said they didn't want to jeopardize Walter. That's ridiculous. Well, 
Where the devil have you two been? I was just about to send a posse out looking for you. Well, Paul, we, uh, we sort of got hung up. Yeah, we was left up in the air, so to speak. Yeah. Well? <laughs> yeah, Paul, we was out trying to get Walter back. Oh. Back? Back from where? I'm afeard Walter's in a heap of danger. Oh, is he? From what? From falling off a chair? Walter! Am I glad to see you, boy. I miss you something terrible. You all right, Hobie? Sure, look at him. He's tickled to death to be back. He is? He's awfully excited. You got to expect that after what he's been through. Well, yeah, especially being high strung and all like he is. Come on, Walter. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Going up to read that ransom note to Walter. Oh, what's the matter? Can't he read it himself? Not without his glasses. <clears throat> Ain't he a caution ball? Prime beef, Mr. Cartwright. That's the finest I've seen. Well, they weathered the trail drive pretty good. My company is the largest buyer hereabouts. Now, the next time you send a herd through, you'll be sure to look us up. We pay top dollar. All right. Well, they're all ten and ready for shipping. Didn't lose a one. That's uh, good drive. They're all yours now. If you boys will step into my office. I'll make out the transfer and bill of sale. Oh, well, Jim, uh, why don't you make out the papers, and meanwhile, we'll... Wash away a couple of weeks with the trail dust. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to find me a place that's got fresh eggs and vegetables and fruit, and I'm going to eat me so much I can't even push away from the table. That ought to take about three days. Oh, now, come on, little brother. Don't limit me. feel more like my old self again. And you're getting to look like your old self again, too. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Rain. Don't be sorry. Let's keep out of my way. He's blind, boy. Yeah. Don't you think you've had enough to drink? Gavin, I pay you to take care of my ranch, not wet nurse me. Yes, sir. Now, I say we should get on home. I say keep your hands off me. Gavin, I just hit you. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Anybody else do that, you'd rip his throat out. Why not me? You know the answer to that, Mr. Rain. Don't let these stop you. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me back. I can't do it. I want you to. Do you hear me? I want you to. Hit me! Fear of it, you're a big man. What he did, I don't call him a big man. I figure you needed that. You're right. You big enough to take it? You right or left-handed? Right-handed. 
Brought you the ten. Now, I'm not going to duck away. But I will hit back. And I, uh, I figure you got the first one coming. You mean that? Come ahead. You hit pretty hard. Well, I've had it if you have. It's all... all washed out of me. I'm grateful to you, Mr... Cartwright. Ben Cartwright. Thank you, Ben Cartwright. I'm Matthew Rain. Take a minute. Hope I didn't make you feel you had to accept my invitation. <laughs> now, the way I figure it, a man punches me in the nose, the least I can do is have coffee with him at his house. <laughs> I feel the same way. Well, I should be back before dark. You'll be at the hotel. Yeah, or in the saloon. They serve a mighty fine meal over there. Don't eat too much. That horse of yours has to carry you over the mountains. It just might turn out to be the other way around. <laughs> There's an empty seat in that poker game in there. I think I'm going to fill it. Yeah, there's an empty bed over there in that hotel room. I think I'll fill it. <laughs> that fella, Rain, does he, he remind you of anybody? I hadn't noticed. Anybody we know real well? Yeah. Our Paul. Starting to worry. No need to. We were detained. Your face. What happened? That's what detained us. Where were you? Why did you let this happen? Ask him. Oh, you must feel very proud of yourself. That'll be enough, Mrs. Loring. Mr. Cartwright is here at my invitation. So long as he's a guest at my house, you'll treat him accordingly. I'm sorry. Now that's settled. Run some hot water for us to clean up. Then serve the coffee. Yes, sir. Stable the horses, give them an extra measure of grain. Anything else? If there is, I'll let you know. You interested in firearms, Mr. Cartwright? Uh, yes, I am. Appreciate it if you call me Ben. All right, Ben. After coffee, I'll show you my collection. This will be a hobby of mine. How do you like your extra measure of grain? Mrs. Loring, this is the best pie I've ever tasted. My cook, Hopsing, would be very jealous of you. Thank you. If you gentlemen need anything, you call me. Hmm? Hmm. 
She seems very nice. She's a good cook. Been with me over two years. Mm. Sets a fine table. Come over here. What do you think of this? Ooh. Beautiful piece. It was a gift from a Raja in India. Used it to bag my first tiger. Oh. It was almost my last, too. <laughs> what happened? Charged straight at me. Got him with a bullet in the heart. He dropped right at my feet. Things like that age a man. Oh, about five years' worth. <laughs> Perfect balance. How's it fire? Like to try it and see? Yes, I would very much. I'll have Gavin set up the targets. Sound, I'd say you were a bit high. Well, you guessed right. It was me, not the rifle. Try again. <laughs> Dead center. Fine shooting. Well, like you said, hold a two line and she does the rest. May I? Matthew. Are you a gambling man? Name it. Well, you know, in artillery, they have spotters who direct the line of fire for the gunners. Now, suppose I act as spotter, and I'll bet you a dollar that you can zero in in three shots. <laughs> you got yourself a bet. Good. About, it's about six inches to the left. And about three inches down. That should give us a point to work from. That was about a foot to the right and six to eight inches too high. Uh, uh, about a, an inch or so to the right. That yeah, should do it. I guess I'm not a very good spotter. Well, that should, that should be a true line there. Uh, about three inches down. Hold it. That should have it bracketed. You won yourself a dollar. Oh, no. Here, take it. Come on, you've won it. Take it. Matthew, why don't you try it again? I shouldn't have tried it in the first place. Take your dollar. Let's go inside. Have a drink before you leave. That kind of bottle I can hold was hit. Gavin? Right here, Mr. Rain. Clean this. Bring Mr. Cartwright's horse out front. Yes, sir. Belly full of him. Gavin do this, and Gavin clean the rifle, and Gavin. You can do... always leave. Well, these days you'll go too far, and I will. No, you won't. Matthew Rain pays you twice the money you'd ever make any place else. You'll stay. You'll stay and take his insults and his money. Well, don't be too sure. You better get back to your work. <laughs> There's a dance tomorrow night. You want to go? No, thank you. Why not? Look, we've been over this and over this. I don't know why you still persist. Well, what's wrong with me? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with you. I'm just not interested. Well, you got no call to be so uppity. You just go take a look in a mirror. Take a good look. In a couple of years, you'll be grateful if a man even nods at you. That may be true. But for now, I still have the right to pick and choose. 
Do you think the rich Mr. Rain is going to pick and choose you? Forget it. Matthew, I want to thank you for a real nice visit. Ben, stay a few days. Can give you good hunting here. Scenery to compare with your Ponderosa. Well, I'd like to, Matt, but uh, I think I'd better get back and see what those boys of mine are up to. Well, perhaps some other time. Yeah. Goodbye, Ben. Bye, Matt. Bye, Mrs. Loring. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright, do you, do you have a few extra minutes? Yeah, sure. I, I'd like to show you something. All right. Have you ever heard of Matthew Rain, the artist? Is he that Matthew Rain? He never said a word. He never would. Paintings hang in art galleries all over the world. How long has he been blind? It started some time ago. He's been totally blind for the last two years. And nothing can be done. He's been examined by the finest doctors in the world. It's a disease that affects the fluid in the eyes. Matthew Rain will be blind for the rest of his life. I came to work for him when he bought this place. And day by day, Mr. Cartwright, bit by bit, I've watched him draw away from life, into himself, but today, today for the very first time, I saw him interested in something, in somebody besides himself. An artist with such talent. Why don't you stay on for a few days? He needs somebody like you. Oh, I, well, I, I'd like to. It, just so, so many things that I simply must get done. I have obligations. Men you? like you see a man hurt, wounded, dying, and you rush to help him. You sacrifice time and obligations to help him. But for Matthew Rain, you just pass by and close your eyes. He is also dying. Well, yeah, I think you're exaggerating. Am I, Mr. Cartwright? Am I, or is it just more convenient not to admit it? I'm sorry, I... I shouldn't have said that. No. You're a stranger here. It's not your concern. If you think I could help, I... You really care, don't you? Well, I... It's just that I... I know what he's going through. Four years ago, I was the mother of two beautiful children, the wife of the most wonderful man I love so dearly. There was an epidemic, and I, I buried them. 
with them, I buried a part of myself. Well, what was left breathed, ate, slept, but it, it had no will, no desire to even go on living. And when I, when I, I came to work here, I saw another human being who had no desire to live, who was alone. That's when I started to live again. Mr. Cartwright, Mr. Cartwright, if, if Matthew just had one reason to want to live, if he doesn't, Well, I'll, I'll, I don't know what good I can do, but I'll, I'll stay and try. Now, if you can get uh, Gavin to ride into town and tell my boys to get along home. Mrs. Loring, in some ways, Matthew Rain is a very lucky man. to do now? Gonna have to take my vest off. Ready? Care for a sandwich? No, thank you, Mrs. Loring. This is enough. That should be check. <laughs> you dirty bird. <laughs> My backside field seems more like three days. <laughs> Want to take a breather? Uh -uh. I feel fine. Just not used to it as all. Matter of fact, I'm not used to many of the things we've done these last few days. They've been good days. I've enjoyed them. Think those boys of yours can take care of things at the Ponderosa? Well, my big worry is they'll find out they can handle things better than their old man. <laughs> good for a man to have a family. I was always too busy to start one myself. It's not too late. You'd be a good catch for a woman. A woman wants a complete man. I don't qualify. Oh, come on, that isn't so. The way I feel. Matthew? How do you treat Mrs. Loring the way you do? I treat her the same as I do anyone who works for me. She can always leave. That's the point. She doesn't leave. She's well paid. You know, you're blind in more ways than one. Ben, you say things I wouldn't allow any other man to say. That's because I speak the truth to you. All right, Ben. In the future, I will try to be more polite to Mrs. Loring. Well, that wasn't the point I was trying to make. Drop it, shall we? You know, I've been many places all over the world. But this is the most vibrant land I ever found for my brush. When I knew what was happening to my eyes, 
I wanted to be here. This is one of the last places I was able to see. Ben, what do you see out there? Describe it. I'm not very good at this. Try. Uh, well, there's a meadow over to the left. And uh, the lake is filled from the winter snows. The colors, Ben. Tell me about the colors. The land is all green. There are many different shades of green, Ben. The green of the meadow is like newborn grass after a spring rain. And the dark green of the hillside is like a deep forest shrouded in gray mist. And the trees that watch over the lake are like brown warriors in tattered uniforms. And over us, the sun glints silver on the lake. It dances on the darkness of the water. Until it softens into night. Then, the blue-green stillness. That's how I remember it. <laughs> Let's go back. You got company, Mr. Rain. Who is it? Said he was from San Francisco. Mrs. Loring is with him in your studio. All right, take care of the horses. I have some business to transact. Shouldn't take long. Oh, well, I'll uh, go in and wash up. Come with me. All right. I have to sell one of my paintings. When I started, I lived on nothing. It had its drawbacks, but I was content. I became recognized. Money became something to buy good times with. I spent it as fast as I made it. Now I can't hold a brush. Well, let's see what Mr. Stevens has to offer. The color. They just seem to leap off the canvas. Mr. Rain's tragic misfortune has been a great loss to the art world. Mr. Stevens, would you like some coffee? Anything at all to drink? Nothing, thank you. I'm content merely to drink in the beauty of these words. Mr. Raines, how happy I am to see you. You look marvelous. This is Mr. Stevens. He's handled the sale of my work for many years. And quite Stevens. profitably for both of us, I may add. This is Mr. Cartwright. Delighted. Mr. Rain, you'll never know how thrilled I was to receive your letter. Why, do you know I must have at least five clients who will be absolutely furious with me unless I notify them instantly when I return to my salon with your painting? That's fine. Let's get on with it, shall we? Oh, uh, yes, yes, of course, by all means. Now, uh, which one did you wish to sell? I haven't thought about it. Why don't you pick one? Uh, yes, yes, of course, if you'd prefer. The one with the sea lions. I am positive Mr. Carruthers would pay $3,000 for it. No, I painted that for a dear friend. He died before it was finished. I, I don't want to sell it. Of course. I understand. How about this one of the bear? Not that one. I, I, I knew him intimately. He almost killed me. This one of the South Seas. I'm sure I could get a fine price for it. I lived on that island for almost a year. No. Mr. Rain, I'm afraid I'm not being very helpful. Perhaps if you would choose... Take one. what you want. I don't want to know which one. Sell it and send me the check. And... Why don't you stay here with Mr. Stevens and make the necessary arrangements? I don't think you should be alone right now. You'll be all right. Ben? Yes, Matthew. Join me. All right.
Made a bit of a fool of myself that time. Oh, I don't think so. If you had to choose, which of your sons would you give up? <laughs> Pretty difficult question. Maybe it would have been better if I hadn't stopped that bear. You don't mean that. <laughs> don't I? That uh, painting of the sea lions. You did that at Carmel in California, didn't you? How'd you know? Well, I recognize the landscape. You know, I was down in Carmel on business once, I can't remember just why. But I do remember walking along the beach one day and I saw an old battled, scarred sea lion slowly drag himself out of the surf and onto the beach. That old sea lion had just come out of the surf to die. As I watched, there were two dogs playing around on the beach and they spotted him. They attacked him. All that old time I wanted was to be left alone to die. But he reared up and fought those dogs off. With his last remaining strength, he fought them off. And then he laid his head down in the sand and died. He wanted to die. Why didn't he let the dogs do the job? Because he wanted to die with dignity. And there's no dignity in giving up when you still have the strength to fight. I do hope Mr. Rain won't be too upset over my selection. But I know I can get the most for this painting. Please don't worry. Will you take it to San Francisco with you? Oh, indeed, yes. However, uh, do you have a crate to carry it in? Oh, well, I'll have Gavin build one for you. And would it be all right if he brought it to you in town? That way you wouldn't have to wait. Well, now, that is most thoughtful of you. I'm staying at the hotel. I feel that I've caused enough unhappiness for Mr. Rain. Would you convey my goodbyes? Yes, I will. And you'll have your painting this evening. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are the people that had paid $3,000 for this? Mm-hmm. And consider themselves very fortunate. Why? It's only a picture. Only a picture. There are very few people in the world that can even paint one like it. I look like so much to me. What's so great about it? You better get started on that crate as soon as possible. Oh, no, you don't. Gavin, take your hands off me. Yeah, when I'm ready to. Now, you listen to me good. I don't have much learning, and I don't speak with fancy talk. And I ain't been all around the world, but I am a man. I think like a man, and I act like a man. And there ain't nobody gonna treat me like anything less. Leastwise, not a woman. Have you finished? And all I want is for you to be nice to me. That ain't asking too much, is it? Just be nice to me. Be nice! Stop it! You bore me. Oh, I do, huh? I bore you. But the rich Mr. Rain, he don't bore you, does he? He... That's what you want, ain't it? You ain't gonna get that from no blind, half-dead man like Rain! No! Did he hurt you? No. He just frightened me more than anything. What's been happening here? Nothing, Mr. Rain. I have ears. What happened? Oh, just a little misunderstanding, Matthew. It's all settled now. Stevens, you still here? He selected a painting and, and left just a little while ago. Your voice. Something's frightened you. I'm perfectly all right. Come over here. I said come over here. You're trembling. Now, I want to know what's been happening. Gavin, is that you? Yes. 
What happened? It's none of your business. What? You heard me. It's none of your business. Did you hurt her? Did you hurt her? Mrs. Loring, he has a week's wages coming. Pay him. And stay away from here. That's right, Mrs. Loring. You pay me off. You fix his meals. You clean his house. And when he's through with you, someone else can take your place, because he can't do nothing for himself. You've had your say? Yeah, I've had it. I'll get me a job, because I gotta earn my way. But tell me something, Mr. Rain. When your paintings are gone, what are you gonna do? I don't even know what color. trying to prove what are you trying to prove leave me alone oh stop feeling sorry for yourself what do you mean just that stop feeling sorry for yourself get out sure so you can destroy everything including yourself is that what you want to destroy yourself well that's easy it takes courage to live. What for? To do what you were born to do. I... I can't! Matthew. A creative man is not a one-sided man. Don't lecture me like a child. Then stop acting like a child. Get out. I'll get out after you've listened to me. Get out! You can't see, and now you won't listen. Matthew! Don't you understand you have a gift? The gift of being able to create. 
You have the ability to put on canvas pictures which have brought so much joy to so many people. To create. It's a gift God gives to so few men. Well, he's taken it away again. Only one side of it. You can still paint pictures. How? And today you described a scene to me. You remember? You described it as you remembered seeing it. But what you were talking about was so much more beautiful than what I was looking at. Don't you understand? You can still paint pictures, not with a brush, with a pen. Matthew, he's right. Think of the countless stories you've told me these last two years. Beautiful, exciting stories. Why, they just poured out of you. You showed me places I never dreamed existed. How can I? I don't know how to write. Well, did you know how to paint when you started? Try. Uh, how can I? By myself, I, I, I need someone. You have someone. Anne, would you stay with me? To help me? For as long as you want me. Please. for two years. I've never known what you're really like. You're beautiful. I'm not at all beautiful. I'm a plain-looking, middle-aged woman. This Anne Loring is beautiful. Ain't that a pretty picture? What do you want? Satisfaction, Mr. Rain. That's what I want, that's what I'm gonna get. I thought I told you to leave. That art dealer. He said that a man had paid $3,000 for one of these pictures. Now, I ain't too smart, but maybe, just maybe, I might find someone to buy them from me and not ask questions on how I got them. You think I'm smart enough for that? You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Will you just stand there and watch me? You ain't gonna give me any trouble. And don't try to call Cartwright. I'll shoot him if I have to. Gavin, don't! I'll give you money all you want! Money's only part of it. Help the rest of his life.
I'm all right. Yeah, everything seems to be all right. How is he? Battered, but he'll recover. Gavin, do you hear me? I hear you. Why do you hate me? To you. It's just a name you called when you needed something. No, I, I, I wasn't even a name. Just a thing. I'm as good as you are. I'm a man, too. I'm a human being, and you had no right to think I was anything else. Well, I'll, I'll take him into town to the sheriff. No. You're right, Gavin. These past two years, I've been so wrapped up in self-pity, I had no room left inside me for any other emotion. I don't feel that way now. Gavin, I'm sorry. Ben, let him go. those two shots and realized how close I was to death. I knew I wanted to live. Just staying alive sometimes makes other problems kind of unimportant. Thanks to you and Anne. <laughs> Anne, Gavin. Matthew, I've just got to get on home. We will see you again, won't we? Yes, many times. I hope many times. And do you have anything left of that pie you baked yesterday? I'm sure I have. Well, let's have some of it and some coffee. How's that sound, Ben? <laughs> Sounds wonderful. <laughs> While we're eating, I have a story to tell you. About the time I rode around the Great Wall of China on the back of a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> You can always tell a first-rate town by the way the people treat a stranger. Now, you know we're first class around here because this is genuine bay rum I'm throwing in, absolutely free. I appreciate that word free, sir, because I'm down to my last dollar. Well, you got a nice way about you, mister. But if you want to make money around this town, your strong back will help you more than your good manners. Oh? The mines, they're running full blast around here, paying top dollar, too. The cattlemen, on the other hand, are suffering. What's good for one is bad for the other. Why, Ben Cartwright's been coming to town the past two days trying to get men for the roundup. But they're all taking jobs in the mines. Guess you can't blame a man when you stack up the difference in wages. Ben sure is persistent, though. Which one is little Joe? The one on the Pinto. Hey, how come you knew his name? I thought you said you was a stranger around here. Oh, everybody's heard about the Ponderosa, the Cartwrights. You heading for the mines? I always go where the real money is. You sure you want to sign on? Well, I'll tell you how it is, Mr. Ben. If I go to the mines, they're going to pay me too much money. Too much money? Well, what can a man do with money but spend it on Saturday nights for whiskey and women? Now, at my age, too much of both <laughs> ain't good for me. Now, with what you pay me, I can stay healthy. <laughs> you got yourself a job, Harry. <laughs> An explanation like that deserves beer, Harry. <laughs> Come yeah. on, Harry. Oh. Oh. Oh.
hear you need hands. That's right. Well, I'm looking for a job. Uh, we're looking for cow hands. I know. You don't mind me asking, have you ever pushed cattle before? Yeah, I've done it before, and, and like I say, I'm, I need a job. Well, if it's money you're needing, why haven't you tried the mines? You see, a man should only go below ground once when they plant them there in a pine box. Me, I, I like fresh air. Well, that sounds fair enough, Pa. Uh, where have you worked before, Mr. Uh, Stafford, Clay Stafford. Uh, you worked any ranches before? Uh, the Circle J and Lazy Bar up in Oregon Territory. Lazy Bar is one of the biggest ranches up there. Ever worked around here? Well, no, no local references, if that's what you mean. He's healthy and he needs a job, Pa. What more do you want? Well, wages are $8 a week. Payday every Friday and a bonus at the end of the job. Sounds fair. All right. Clay Stafford. Right. Very good. We'll be leaving in about an hour. Doesn't look like anybody else in the lineup here. I'll get some supplies. Right. Hey, thanks for putting in a good word with your father. It made any difference. You'd have gotten the job anyway. We need hands. Hey, where are you from, Stafford? Call me Clay. From a lot of places. Now, a man only gets born in one. Well, that'd be New Orleans. Hey, no kidding, New Orleans? My mother was born there. That's a coincidence. Yeah, that, that sure is. I'll tell you one thing, Clay. If you gotta work for a living, you might as well put in your time for the Cartwrights. Well, this is downright luxury here. Solid floor in the bunkhouse, springs in the beds, not even any busted window panes. You ain't been doing much riding lately, huh? How do you mean? Well, hardly any calluses on your hands. Wear gloves. Well, I'll be work a plenty starting tomorrow. I think I'll go in and try out them springs right now. Huh. It's a pretty fancy holster you got there. Yeah, it's a McKendrick special. It's like the left front end of it all. Well, you see, you don't draw the gun slips out. Oh, yeah. You'd be ready to fire that in the wink, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's, it's fast. You won't be needing anything that fast around here. It's a day's work that lasts a week. Been so saddle sore since I was young. Well, I'm ready, Mr. Cartwright. All right. See you. Yeah. Where's he going? Back to the ranch. I'm gonna help little Joe bring out the supplies. How'd you talk him into that? After the day's work he put in. I didn't. He volunteered. Beaver for work, ain't he? We could use a couple more like him.
Clay, what are you doing back here? Thought I'd give you a hand with supplies. Hey, thanks, I can use a hand as soon as I finish the coffee. It's some place you got here. Yeah, it sure is. My pa built this place with his bare hands. I was born in that little room upstairs. But you said you were from New Orleans. No, no, that's where my pa married my mother. They were married there, and then they came back here to settle down. You uh, remember your mother? No, not too much. Just what my pa told me about her. I always said she was like, like having spring in the house the year round. Always laughing, full of fun and warmth. Guess she must have looked pretty nice, huh? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I guess she was about the prettiest woman in New Orleans. Hey, I've got a, got a picture of her right here. I always carry it with me. What do you think? Like having spring in the house all year round. Prettiest picture I've ever seen. Sure wish this was mine. What? Oh, uh, it was a silly thing for me to say. I, I was just thinking how I how I never knew my mother. Kind of wish she looked like this. Hey, we better head out. We're gonna get back to camp before sundown, huh? I guess we better. Those supplies won't take care of themselves. enough to see your way clear to to give me a two dollar advance on my next week's pay well harry it's uh it's barely 11 o'clock have you run through your eight dollars already well, well it, it's this way mr ben now they, these these miners around here they're drinking more whiskey and giving more to the girls so i got to raise my sights to meet the competition <coughs> well, harry what about that what about your health that you're so worried about? Saturday night. I'll worry about my health Sunday morning. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're a lucky night, huh? Yeah, it sure is. You just come into town. Yeah, the first of the week. Well, you've been keeping yourself. Herding cattle? You're a cowpoke, huh? Yeah, that's right. No, I deal with it. Hey, Mel. We're wasting a lot of time on this little glass, can't you? Give me something a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Four trays. You say you're a cow hand. Yeah, that's right. I've been working the Ponderosa. You say you're a cheap. We work in the mines hard for our money. But being under the ground don't hurt my eyes none. Looks to me like you low carded. I see it's my lucky night. And I say we want our money back. Every man to his own opinion. you get miners and cattlemen together, they just itching for something to happen. And this thing was just about what they were waiting for. Joseph, the sheriff's right. It's best the boy leave town. Pa, it is not right and it's not fair. Now, we all know he shot in self-defense. Maybe so. But do you know whether or not he low-carded? Roy, a man is innocent until proven guilty. A stranger, a fast gun, and a card sharp all wrapped up in one package? Now, that's something Virginia City don't oh, need. Oh, wait a minute, Roy. Wait a minute. What do you mean, a stranger? Everybody's a stranger until they settle someplace. And as for being a fast gun, if he wasn't, he'd be dead instead of the miner. So don't use that. 
All right, I'll grant you that. But you ain't answering the main point. Was he cheating or wasn't? But the point is there is no proof the man was cheating. That is not the point. Little Joe, when I first took this job, and that was a few years ago, I made an arrangement of myself. I said, Roy, the best way to handle trouble is to avoid it. And it's worked out pretty well. Now, if this fellow Stafford stays around town, I'm just laying myself wide open to more killings. Can't you see that? Now, that's why he's got to go. No, I can't see it. It's not right, Roy, and it's not fair. Come on, Joseph. The sheriff knows best it's his job. I'll take care of it, Roy. The young man will leave in the morning. Thanks, Ben. So long, little Joe. Well, right is right, and this isn't. Now, Joseph, you're doing a lot of talking about right is right, and proof, and facts. Well, what facts do you have? What do you know about them? You worked a couple of ranches up in Oregon Territory? What else? But that isn't the main point. If he stays in Virginia City, he may be killed. Now, Roy is right. He knows best. Come on. Are you heading out? Yeah, I figured I'd have to move on sooner or later. Not quite this soon. I'm sorry to see you go. I put my time in here. Your father got his money's worth. Oh, I know that. Besides that, your father and the sheriff made it pretty clear that my welcome had run out. Yeah, I know. I still think they're wrong about that. I told him so last night. I mean, you stuck up for me? Argued against your father? Why not? What's right is right. Is that all? No, it's not all. I, I don't know. We got along pretty good. Kind of thought we could be friends. You remember that picture of your mother you showed me? Yeah. Can I see it again? What for? Just let me see it. See, this isn't just a picture of a beautiful woman. She's my mother, too. Something I don't like about closed doors. Man's got a right to talk in private. Yeah, but when it's family, I don't like to be left outside. Well, how do you know it's about family? When a brother shows up from nowhere, it ain't family. Maybe. If I wants to talk to Clay alone. Of course. She told me she'd been married before. She also told me she'd had a child. But she said the baby had died. They lied. They lied to her and they lied to me. They lied. Who? My grandparents, my, my father's folks. They were against the marriage from the very beginning. They, they hated my mother. Didn't think she was good enough for their son. Well, when we all got the fever, my father died. They told my mother that, that I had died also. And See, when I was old enough to ask questions, they told me that she was dead. And after all this time, how did you find us? Well, last year I shook the wander dust off my heels and, and went back to New Orleans. Guess I... Got sentimental, wanted to put a flower or two on Mother's grave. Of course, that's when I found out there wasn't any grave. After that, I checked with the Hall of Records and around, and that's when I found out about, about you being married to my mother and about the Ponderosa. Clay, why didn't you tell us all this when you first got here? Well, I didn't want to push myself into a family. I don't know why I came here. I guess because I, I wanted to 
wanted to see my brother. Oh, and find out if I, if I liked you or not. No, none of this changes the fact that I better be moving on. Those, those miners are pretty hot under the collar. Well, you, you'll be all right here in the Ponderosa. Are you sure, sir? Of course. They won't come out here. No, sir, that's not what I mean. What do you mean? I mean, do you believe me? Of course I do. Of course I believe you. News is rather startling. You have to admit that. I, out of the blue, so to speak. Takes a little getting used to. Look, we, uh, we have plenty of room in here. Why don't you, uh, why don't you move in from the bunkhouse? Thank you, sir. Sleep. Yeah, it's uh, kind of late. I guess I should have asked Hoss, little Joan, Clay asleep. I suppose I'll be asking that from now on. Yeah, I guess you will. Well, he sure came out of the blue. Hmm? Well, he did kind of come out of nowhere. What are you driving at? <clears throat> well, I hope you don't mind, but uh, Horace and I were kind of talking it over, and we, uh... Well, don't you think you ought to check his story out? You and Horace think that I might have made up the whole thing? Well, we think it's important enough to know for sure. I mean, it uh, wouldn't do any harm to send a telegram to Judge Wharton down in New Orleans. Would it? Town. Just rode in all the way from the ranch to ask you the same question. Your boss said that there were some supplies that needed picking up. You know you were the one that was going to pick them up? No difference doesn't make it. They needed picking up. Look, Pa told you we're safe on the ranch, but not here in town. But it's working hours. The miners are underground. Just half of them. They work on shifts. Now, let's get this wagon loaded and get out of here. Brother Joe, you worry too much. What you need is a beer to help you relax. Since we're in town, why don't we take care of that, huh? Hey, wait a minute and use your head. Now, the town is hot. The saloon's one place you're going to run into trouble. Maybe you won't have to look that far. Seems to be here right now. a couple of beers that cool us all off. Since Saturday, we're kind of particular about the company we keep. Take a horse thief, you can see the horse he steals. A fellow robs a bank, well, there's the money. But a card sheet. Well, if he's good at it, it's over and done with before you know what's happened. If Sam hadn't been drinking, nothing would have happened. There was no reason for it. Well, Sam ain't here to argue the point, but we are. And we aim to do more than just argue. You're on using that gun? I never draw first. Just like to keep the street clean. You think one gun's enough? Two guns, gentlemen. Now, why don't you all just forget it? 
We don't want anybody to get hurt. Why don't you keep your nose out of this, Cartwright? Friend or no friend, he's gonna get his. He's not just a friend, he's my brother. All right. There'll be another day. Use that beer now. Well, couldn't we just load the wagon and leave town? Maybe you're right, brother. Well, the beans are on the fire. We'll have a drink. Well, you better take it easy. We got to be back to camp before light. Here's just the thing that'll help us take it easy. Here, drink up. You sure you got enough? <laughs> hey, this is whiskey. Not exactly. <coughs> well, what is it then? Polke. Polke, what's that? Well, it's a drink they have down in Mexico. They make it out of cactus. When you were loading up the wagon, I got it from Manuel back at the livery stable. Come on, drink up. Yeah. It's hot, but it's good. Yeah, just like riding a nice, easy bronc. <laughs> but when he discovers that burr under his saddle, watch out. Yeah, don't worry about me. I can take it. You know, this is better than a saloon. Yeah, you're right, and the company's better, too. Hey, how'd you happen to learn about this, uh... Pulque? Pulque, yeah. Oh, when I was down in Mexico, it's the only kind of liquor they have down there, so you have to learn to like it. Now, what are you doing down there? Ah, fighting with Juarez. Fighting with Juarez? What, in his army? Yeah, I was down there for two years as a lieutenant. Man, how'd you happen to get mixed up in a thing like that? Well, the pay was good, and I happen to believe in what he was fighting for. Yeah, he was, he was fighting that, uh, that emperor, Maximilian, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I read a little bit about that somewhere. You know, Juarez was a, was a real Mexican, not a Spaniard. It was just like one of the thousands of peasants he led. A great man. Hmm. You know, it's kind of kind of sad he had to fail. Oh, he'll come back. And when he does, maybe, maybe I'll go back, too. Hey, you know, we're getting much too serious. Come on, drink up, will you? <laughs> All right. I'll hey, look, I'll tell you about the girls that used to follow the army. <laughs> now, look, there was this one gal. Her name was Conchita. Oh, Conchita. So, you see, when we ran out, Conchita went right through the enemy lines and brought back a couple of jugs. <laughs> <laughs> brought back a couple of jugs. <laughs> hey, look. Now, that's a, that is the kind of girl. That Conchita. That's the kind of girl that I would like to have. Oh, Conchita, she had a sister. Rosita. Hey, Rosita. Hey, listen, now, in all, in all seriousness, we ought to get down there and get that Conchita and that Rosita. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Viva, Juarez. Viva! Viva! Viva la revolucion. Viva, viva. 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 Viva, viva pulque. pulque. Ah, there's a lot of pulque in there. Oh, that Conchita and Bonita. Ah, viva your Rosita. My Rosita and Bonitas. Viva my brother! Hey! Viva my brother! Viva! Viva my brother! We've got to get down there and viva that Conchita right now. Ah, viva! Morning, Joe. Morning. Morning. After a night of chewing the fat, nothing like a big breakfast to get you back in action. Hey, yeah, that's right. Speaking of fat, I'm gonna have me some more of that fat back. He really ain't nothing quite like some good old salt sow belly for breakfast, right, Joe? Ah, uh, well, no. Well, I'm sorry, fellas, I'm wrong. No, 
I'm just, I'm raring to go this morning. <laughs> it's too bad we drank all that pulque. You'd like it. You know, now me, I personally prefer a great big glass of hot whiskey, about a hundred proof. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess we're just unlucky, huh? <laughs> well, morning, boys. I'm here. I'm here to work. Oh, morning, Joseph. Say, I've never seen you look better. Oh, I'm feeling real good, too. Oh, well, that's real fine, because we sure got a lot of work to do today. You, uh, boys had quite a chat last night. Yeah, I guess we overdid it. Well, I think he lived. <laughs> boys, I gotta ride back to the ranch. Keep things moving, huh? Right, Pop. That Clay sure is a likable fella, isn't he? Yeah, sure is. You know, if me or you, either one, brought Joe home in the condition he was in last night, we wouldn't have heard the last of it till yet. Well, that's for sure. What do you mean a condition I'm in? I'm not in any kind of condition. I heard what Pa said. Let's get started. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm sorry, fella. <laughs> to see us. Yeah, I got the telegraph back from New Orleans. What did it say? Story checks out. What's the matter, then? Alvin Warden is a very good lawyer. When he investigates, he gets all the facts. Marie was his mother. He was born in New Orleans, raised by his grandparents. It's all true. What's the trouble, Paul? Something that Alvin found out that happened two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah, in a little town in Texas. Chico Wells. Seems there was a card game. Clay was winning a lot of money. Matt accused him of cheating. Reached for his gun. Clay killed him. Yeah. It's sort of stretching the long arm of coincidence, ain't it? I'm afraid that's how a lot of people will look at it. How do you look at it? What are you going to tell little Joe? Well, he's going to have to face the fact that there can be weaknesses in people even those you care about. You gonna let Clay stay around? I uh, guess we'll have to give him the benefit of whatever doubts we have about him. I don't understand. What is he guilty of? Joseph, I'm not accusing him of anything. But we both know how he's lived. All right, he's led a different life. He's been alone. But it doesn't change the fact that he's my brother and he's still part of this family. Well, of course he is. I'm not disputing that. But he must realize, and you must help him realize, that well, things are different here. Tragedies like, like the other night with the miner. You keep saying that. Now, it was not his fault. And the only reason you'd have for saying that is because you think he was cheating. The only person who can answer that is Clay himself. All right, I'll talk to him. I think it might be better if I talked with him. Now, please let me talk to him, Bob. Please let me be the one. All right. Thanks. Hey, Clay, you know, I've been thinking. Now, the roundup's gonna be over in a couple of days, and I, I thought you and I could take a trip somewhere. Huh? Well, you know, Viva Juarez. Kinda like to go down to Mexico, see how the revolution's coming along. You know, it's not all just fun down there, Joe. As I told you the other night, a revolution's a pretty serious thing. I remember. I remember most of it. Look, if it's not Mexico, it'll be some other place. I don't care. I just want to take a trip and have some fun. We're brothers, aren't we? Now, the roundup's over. We'll collect our pay and take off. Okay, when the roundup's over, we'll figure out where we'll go. Good enough. Well, we have the last.
last of these strays rounded up by tomorrow. I'm so busy, I haven't had much chance to talk. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, uh, who does Joe talk to? Well, you mean about going to Mexico? What's this about Mexico? Well, the other night we talked about the two years I spent with Juarez in Mexico. He thought now, after the roundup, it might be fun to go down there. I see. That's all I talked to you about? Yes, sir. Well, what was he supposed to talk about, sir? And Clay, we, we understand what a rough time you've had these past 10 or 12 years. Making your way alone. And uh, understand that your way of life is different from ours as a result. It's, your values are different. But the past is past. You're part of the family now, and we'd like you to stay part of the family. Hope that our way of life, our values, will be yours from now on. Well, sir, I, I don't know. You don't know what? I mean, I appreciate what you've said, and you're very generous, but I've got to be honest with you. I'm not sure that this is my kind of life. Well, are you sure it isn't your kind of life? No, sir. Would you try it? Yes, sir. Good. Let's forget these romantic notions about Mexico. <laughs> well, that was Joe's idea. Well, he was influenced by you. Try to use your influence the right way. Yes, sir, I'll try. Good. See you at the house. Thanks again, Mr. Walsh. Healthy bonus for all hands this year. That sure is. It's one roundup that ended up better than it started. <laughs> Be careful of that money, Joel. I will, sir. Thank you. Hold it, Conrad. Go in the alley. Come on, move. All right. Where is he? Where's who? That new brother of yours. We've been waiting for him. What's the matter? Is he scared to come to town? Nobody's scared. Look, we just don't want any trouble, that's all. Well, it ain't always easy to avoid trouble. Guess we'll have to give you a message for that brother. Go on, take him, boys. Sir. It's pretty badly beaten up, but he'll be all right. Well, did he tell you how it happened? Yes. Apparently, the miners meant it as a message to you. I figured that's what it was. I'm sorry, sir. 
I should have taken off before now. I'll, I'll pack my things tonight. No, Clay, that's no answer. As I told you, you're family now. We'll handle it together. No, sir, that's not what I mean. You see, trouble's been following me all my life. No matter what I do, no matter where I go. And now it's, it's followed me here. Well, running is not going to solve that problem. We'll, we'll handle it somehow. I'll get some broth that I've been heating up. everybody. Oh, Hoss and Adam are paying off the man, and they'll be back soon. Clay's downstairs. Does he know about the miners? Yeah, he knows. Well, I sure hope he doesn't blame himself. You stop worrying about what other people are thinking. You drink that broth. Hey, tell Clay I want to see him. Best thing for you to do right now, young man, is rest. I'll rest as soon as I see Clay. You drink up that broth. And I'll get him. Thanks. Where's Clay? Joe Clay's left. I checked his room. His things are gone. He's gone? Tell me what you said to him, Pop. I didn't say anything to him, Joe. I didn't even see him. I'd already asked him to stay, be part of the family. Son, he's old enough to make his own decisions. And the important thing for you right now is to rest. Take care of yourself. Good night, son. Good night, Pop.
Why don't you leave without me? You better get off that horse before you fall off. Come on over here and sit down. Hey, no, thanks. I just didn't stand up. I think I feel better. Sorry I don't have any pulky, but... Here. Viva coffee. The last thing I need is any more of that pulque. Thanks. Why'd you leave without me? Just like I told your pa. Trouble's been following me all my life. I mean, look what happened to you just on account of me. That's no reason I've been in fights before. Yeah, but this time you were lucky. It was their fists. Next time it could be their guns. Now, Clay, we're brothers. Your fight is my fight. This thing with the miners, we can settle together. Look, you have family now. Don't leave. It won't work, Joe. Clay, we're brothers. We can make it work. Look, let me explain something to you. Just because we're brothers doesn't mean we have to think alike, be alike, do alike. Yes, it happens with some brothers, like you and Adam and Hoss. Why can't it work with you and me? Because it just won't. Look, you lived all your life on the Ponderosa, and you like it. But you see, I couldn't. It would be like being in a cage. All right, then I won't ask you to stay at the Ponderosa now. We'll travel around together. You feel you're ready to settle down. You could down. no more live my life than I could live yours. Well, how do you know? I've never tried it. Look, you saw what happened to that miner. It's happened before, and it can happen again. Maybe things like that won't happen, Clay, if we're together. No, it couldn't. Look, look, you just get in my way. Clay, you don't mean that, you know it. Look, will you get it through your head that I don't want you along? I don't need your family, and I don't need you. Now, will you go home, Joe, where you belong? Bring it back someday. He went back to the ranch. Nah, he's probably found some little girl who couldn't resist his boyish charm. to take your friend on over there for free. Yeah, well, let me stop you. It's just my brother. Still say I could have stuck with you for four rounds. Yeah, well, we'll try it again sometime when your old mate ants aren't around. All right, boys, drinks on Dave Donovan. Go get a drink on Dave. We didn't know you had a bet with that feller. 
You think you could ask me first before you'd butt your nose in and make a fool out of me in front of everybody? I thought we made a mistake. You never get sore. You've been fighting all over town. Look, it's my life and I like it. Now, I don't tell you what to do. I don't want you to tell me what to do. Stop drinking my beer. I want you to quit following me around. Joe, there ain't nobody following you around. First of all, we ain't got the strength. We just came to tell you Paul wants to see you. And what about? He just wants to see you, that's all. Yeah, will you tell Pod? Tell him what, little brother? Yeah, what's the message? Tell Paul, I'll be coming along. A few more drinks. Let you boys along, but I know at your age, you gotta have some sleep. Family, we talk to each other. We don't mumble under our breath. Come here. <clears throat> I'd like to know what happened in town this afternoon. Nothing happened. I was just having a, f a little fun, that's all. I don't like the idea of a son of mine brawling around town like a drunken cowboy. Papa, I wasn't drunk and I wasn't brawling. If you two are going to tell it, why don't you tell it straight? You know, if you don't start using a decent tone of voice with me, I might just have to give you that punch in the jaw I owe you. Yeah, why don't you start right now? That's just enough out of both of you. Paul, little Joe's been spoiling for a fight for three weeks. Why don't you let him have it? Well, come on. That goes for you, too. Now, just a minute. This will go for you three. If you can't talk to each other without fighting, get on up to bed. Now, go on. Not you, Joseph. I want to talk to you. Now, what's this all about? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're spending a lot of time away from the Ponderosa lately. I'd like to know why. Why can't I have some fun without the whole family jumping on me? I'm not jumping on you. Sure, I think everybody should have a little fun. But at the proper times and with the proper companions. I don't know. Oh, it's because I'm the youngest or what? No matter what I want to do or where I want to go, there's Hoss and Adam, ready to tell me what to do and what not to do. And help? Oh, yeah, help, whether I want it or not. Well, don't you think we ought to help each other? Not all the time, Pa. I've spent my whole life on the Ponderosa seeing the same old faces and doing the same old things. I'd always figured that the Ponderosa was your future as well as that of your brother's. But how can I prove if I'm good at anything by myself? Joe, you don't have to prove yourself to us. I'm not trying to prove myself to you, Pa. I'm trying to prove myself to me. And what is it you're trying to prove? I don't know whether... Whether I'm good enough, whether I'm old enough, or whether I'm smart enough to do something by myself without three people waiting there to help me every time I stub my toe. Pa, it's not that I don't appreciate what you... <laughs> well, I guess every young man wants to... strike out on his own. Just that father doesn't like to face up to it. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what gets into me sometimes. I, I, I get restless or something. I don't know. 
Hey, what are you doing here? Huh? When you were in town, you must have heard about that new mine they're opening up on the other side of Sun Mountain. Yeah. Well, Bert Crawford of the Sun Mountain Company is asking for bids to supply the timbering. Bids? Will Povey was in town lining the men up. He says he's got that contract in the bag. I guess he will have, as usual. Yeah. What's this, this little circle you got here? Hmm? Hey, didn't that stand of fur right above Buckhorn Meadow? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's ten miles closer to the mine than any timber Will Povey's gonna bring in. You're not thinking of bidding, are you? Well, I'd sure like to. But as Adam points out, most of that ten miles is straight up and down. It's, it's, it's too tough a job. Anyway, we've got enough to keep us busy right here at home. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something else I wanted to say. I, I haven't been pulling my share of the load here at the ranch, and I'm going to change that starting tomorrow. Sure. Well, I'm for bed. How about you? No, I think I'll just stay up and read for a while, but I, I don't worry. I'll get to bed in time and get up early and start working. Thanks, son. Good night, Pop. Been up all night? Yeah, well, I have. Here, take a look. I got it all figured out. You got what figured out? How to get that buckhorn fur to the Sun Mountain mine and beat Will Povey's oh, price. Oh, now, Joe. Well, Adam and Hoss went up. What? I can do it. I've got it figured. All the figures right here. Look. Uh, what's this? It's the most papers I've seen you with since you was in school. And up early, too. Well, uh, Joe's decided that he's going to bid on that Sun Mountain timber contract for us. The timber contract? Well, we'd agree it was too big a risk. Yeah, what about Will Povey? Yeah, what about Will Povey? I thought about Povey. I'll underbid him by plenty and still make a good profit. Well, you know Povey can play pretty rough. That's fine with me, too. He wants to play rough, I'll hire a crew that plays rougher. Yeah? Who you got in mind? I figure for a foreman, Dave Donovan. He's young and he's tough. Donovan? He's a good man, Pa. Well, that doesn't make sense. You're sure you can do it? I know I can do it. Well, I say let Joe do as he wants to. Huh? Good luck, little brother. Thanks. Tell you what, I'll get you Jake Weber. He'll make you a great foreman. He's a good woodman, too. Adam, I told you I've already got a foreman, Dave Donovan. All right, I'll take a few days off and help you myself. Hey, yeah, me too. The range can wait, can you, Paul? I don't need any help. Now, look, this is my idea, it's my job, and I want to do it by myself. Is that agreed, Pa? Yeah. Well, see you around. Good luck. Joe? Come here. I want you to do something for me. Well, what's that? Break these. Break these? Mm -hmm. All right. Wait a minute. <laughs> you wouldn't think they'd... Well, I can't do it, Bob. That's right. Well, they're together like this. You can't break them. But... Singly, they can be broken. By himself. Each one of us can be broken. Never let pride stand in your way, son. We're all here, if you need us. I'll remember that part. Everybody get started on this idea. Those trees aren't going to cut themselves. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Povey. Bert. 
And here's my bid. Uh, getting in just under the wire, six minutes. What's all Hawkins doing out here from San Francisco? He's just looking around. I'll still make the final decision, Will. I'm counting on that. This is an important contract. You've got the low bid. You're as good as in. If you want your cut, I'd better be. I think I'm gonna just check my figures over on this bid, make sure I get everything correct before I turn it in. Man, you're as pitched as a fox in a forest fire. I know I am. Oh. You bidding? Uh huh. Cutting it kind of fine, aren't you? Bid close any minute now. Yeah, well, I'll make it. Kind of young to be bidding on a big contract like this. Look, d do me a favor. Don't, don't don't talk to me right now. I'm trying to add these figures up. It's, it's kind of hard for me. All right? 17 times 7. 119. Thanks. That's your bid? Uh-huh. Yep. Awful low, isn't it? No, it's an honest bid. About time Sun Mountain got one. I don't follow that, son. It's real simple. They've been getting built out of their timber contracts for a long time. Well, now, wouldn't the folks that run the company put a stop to that sort of thing? Hmm? No, you mean stop it. What do they know about it? The company's probably run by some fat old money bag sitting behind a desk in San Francisco. Couldn't tell you beans about the mining business. Bid's closed. Uh-oh. No, wait a minute, I got one more. I'm afraid that bid's too late. What do you mean, too late? I've, I've been here all the time. I was just rechecking my figures. Bid's acceptable, Mr. Crawford. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, Mr. Hawkins, president of Sun Mountain, and I will now examine the bids. Gentlemen, we'll announce our decision in a few minutes. Your papers, young man. I don't know what your name is, mister, but I want to thank you a lot. The name's Hawkins. You look kind of sick. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm in great shape. It's called the president of the mining company and old fat money bags. Gather round, gentlemen. Mr. Crawford and I have examined all the bids. For instance, Mr. Povey here has offered a very good price. Well, I've always tried to give Sun Mountain the best deal I can, Mr. Hawkins. Crawford here can tell you that. Yes, indeed. This time, I'm afraid it isn't quite good enough. We have a few that are somewhat lower. In fact, Joseph Cartwright here is considerably below you, Mr. Povey. Well, he can deliver Ponderosa Pine, Mr. Hawkins, but the contract calls for fur. And that's what I intend to deliver. Well, you're not talking about that stand of fur up above Buckhorn Meadow, are you? Yeah, I might be. Well, you'd never get it out. That country goes straight up and down between the mine and there. Is that true, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir, that's true, but I've taken that into consideration in my bid. Mr. Hawkins, you can't take this... Quiet, in... please. I like your spunk, young man, and your price. Joseph Cartwright wins the contract. Thank you, sir. See that you deliver that timber, young man. Don't worry, you can count on me. And, uh... You're a lot thinner than I pictured you. Good luck, son.
I'm sorry, Will. I did my best. Yeah, I'll bet you. This is liable to cost you quite a bit of money. Both of us. Unless we can do something about it. You son of a gun, you did it! Well, Will, why here's this? Like I said, it's a lot of money. Joe Cartwright. Say, that bit of yours came as quite a surprise to me, young fella. Well, uh, you know, Mr. Crawford, I kind of got the idea you didn't want me to get that contract. Ah, uh, whatever's best for the company. I'm glad to hear you say that. We'll do a good job for you. Fine. Now, just as soon as you post the performance bond, we'll sign the contract. Post the what? Performance bond. $5,000 cash. So oh, wait a minute. The... There's nothing about that in the contract. Mr. Hawkins didn't even mention it. He didn't have to. It's company policy, standard procedure in all our contracts. Well, you can ask him yourself if you want to. You do have the 5000 don't you? You wouldn't have time to ride out to the Ponderosa and get it. I need it by sundown. That's company policy, too. I think I understand. Can you get your money by sundown? Well, looks like I don't have a job after all, huh? Don't worry, you got a job as soon as we get to the bank. You know, I think I'm going to enjoy seeing how a man gets his hands on 5,000 great big dollars. You know something? I'm going to kind of enjoy seeing it myself. Let's go. If your father wants to co-sign the loan, of course you can have it. You can have twice that amount. Mr. Simpson, I don't have time for that. Isn't there some way? Couldn't I make it a personal loan? I'm afraid that's something else again. What do you want the money for? For a performance bond on the Sun Mountain Timber contract. How'd you get that contract away from Will Povey? By underbidding him. More than $10,000. I'd say you made a very foolish bid. Why, the wagons alone are... I don't need wagons. Going to build a flume. A flume? That's right. I'm going to build a flume right down to the Truckee River. Here. Yeah, I'm going to float those logs right down to the mine. It's going to work. I figured it all out. Oh, dear. Joe, oh, that might work. Did your brother Adam figure this out for you? My brother Adam had nothing to do with it. I figured this out all by myself. I get the loan or not? I'll grant the loan. But remember, if you don't deliver, you're out $5,000, plus the interest. I'll deliver. Don't you worry about it. I'll deliver. You, uh, you have your receipt book with you, Crawford? Come on, I got a lot of things to do. Let me have the receipt. You heard the man, Crawford. Count the money and give him a receipt. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> hey, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to get over the look on that Crawford's face when I handed him that $5,000 in cash. He never thought I was going to raise that money. Why do you figure that? I mean, why? It's a lot of money, that's why. Your name's Cartwright, ain't it? Well, that had nothing to do with it. It was my idea about the flume that sold him on giving me that loan. Ah, oh, come on, Joe. You know you had your family behind you. What kind of chance would I have raising $5,000? Yeah, what difference does it make? We got the money, didn't we? I want you to go out and give me some men. Sure. First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, nothing. You're gonna do it tonight. First thing in the morning, we're going to work. All right, all right. I'll eat some money. What for? You know, spread around, buy some drinks, yeah, get the men. you're right. 
It's getting thinner. Say, uh, while you're in there, do you think maybe I could get about a $50 advance? I'm a little short myself. I don't see why not. You're my foreman, aren't you? See you later, Jack. Right. Good evening. I'm, uh, I'm Jake Weber. Jake, yeah. John right. Cartwright. Nice to see you. I heard tell you got that Sun Mountain contract. I'm open to work right now. Well, I've already got a foreman, Dave Donovan, here. All right. Excuse me, I got some work to do. Right, good luck. He's a pretty good man. Well, that's as may be. You're gonna need a couple of straw bosses, and, uh, I need to work. Jake, tell me something. My brother Adam sent you? Nope. My pa? If you don't want me, just say so. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake. It's got nothing to do with it. I can use you. Say the word, and I can fetch along a lot of my old crew. Good, that's great. I can use every man I can get. I'm gonna camp tomorrow morning up in Buckhorn Meadow. I'll see you on the job, boss. I'll have the men start setting up. All right, it's good to have you with us. Thanks. Thank you, boys, one and all. Now, you are what I call a pretty fair country poker player. Yep. Cards are like the old reliable meat in a pot to me. Yeah, well, it cleans me. Bar, keep more whiskey over here. Hey, you're not leaving so early, are you? Well, it stopped being early two hours ago. Holy smoke, I clean forgot. I'm supposed to be getting men to fill a payroll here. Say, you fellas wouldn't want to come to work for me, would you? No. You better watch your language. No, I'm serious. The work's not hard. Top dollar. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give a bottle of whiskey to every man who signs on with me. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? Bring him on. I wondered when you'd be along. All right, what's the barrier for, Povey? Well, you see, I bought myself a piece of timber that goes through here. Now, I wouldn't want to close off a road, but seeing as how I own it, you wouldn't blame me for charging toll, would you? That's your name, your price, I'll pay it. I figure $25 a wagon ought to do it. I figure a poke in the nose would Take do... it easy, Dave. $25? Well, that's just fine and dandy, Povey. Get it. Okay, open it up. It's going to cost you $25 every time one of your wagons comes through here. And you're going to need a lot of wagons. I hope you figured that in your bid. Okay, open it up. Open it up. Hey. Be careful that log doesn't hit you in the face when it swings back now. He's bluffing. What makes you think so? $25 a wagon load? That would break him. I saw that bid. He hasn't got enough margin. Looks ain't everything in a working man, Joe. They're spry and full of spirit. I can smell that. I'll whip them in the shade. You'll see. There's no work in them. I know they're kind. You let me worry about that, mister. Neither you or me has got this deadline, Donovan. I'm the foreman. I can handle it. Brother Adam and send him packing in five minutes. My brother Adam's not bossing this job, Jake. I am. I right, call him in together. I want to talk to him. All right, you men, gather on. All right, let's get on. on your feet. Boss, let's go. To talk to you. Come on. Right, we got a pretty tough job ahead of us. We're going to build a flume from here to the Truckee River. I'm a fair man. I'm not going to ask any of you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. But I do want a dollar's work for a dollar's pay. We got a deadline on this job. We can meet it if we all pitch in together. We can meet it with time to spare. We're gonna work in two crews. Loggers will work under Jake Weber. That's the you men under Dave Donovan. 
And there'll be no drinking on the job. Any questions? All right, let's get to work. All right, come on, let's go. All right, men, let's go back to work. On a double. Hey, Dave, you see the bottle? Sure. You must be dry after a big speech like that. Hey, what's the big idea? You heard what I just said, no drinking. It goes for everybody. You're getting kind of hard-nosed, aren't you, boy? Expecting you to get the same way. Come on, Foreman. I thought you were going to whip these men into shape. Sure. because we don't feel so good. If you don't feel good, go pick up your time. Now, come on, get moving. Dave! Dave Donovan! Come on, move. Yeah, Joe. Look, Dave, I don't want 100 yards of this flume finished by tonight. 100 yards? It's impossible. It's not impossible if you keep these men working. Now, let's get going. All right. OK, you men, get your backs in time. Let's go! Because he's a car driver, he thinks he can push everybody around. How much longer are you going to put up with him? To pay it. That's tomorrow. Ah, moving this big stuff is mighty slow work, Joe. We're falling behind. Yeah, I know, Jake. We can use some more horses. That sure would help. All right, I'll leave right away. If I don't get back by tomorrow, I want you to pay the men anyway. All right. But I don't think them Donovan men are earning their pay. Jake, don't worry about Dave's men. They're going to do their share of the work. If you say so. Hey, Weber. Put your old timber down at our end. Keep those logs moving. How's it going, Foreman? Pretty good. I'm gonna leave for a day to get a couple more teams of horses. I want you to keep the men working just the way they are. Right. You can count on me. Boys, you so associate with the right people, and the lady luck begins to shine. Well, sit down, boss. We're celebrating payday. All right, suppose you all get back to work. That goes for you, too, Dave. Hey, wait a minute. This is old Donovan, remember? Dave, you're drunk. Now, don't give me any trouble. Don't give you any trouble. How does it feel to be a big man? Money. Giving orders, snapping your fingers and everybody jumping. I don't know what's got into you, but I'm going to say it just one more time. All of you, get back to work. We ain't through celebrating yet, are we, boss? <laughs> it looks like I just lost a foreman. 
Pack up your things and get out. All right. If I leave, my boys go with me. All right, any of you that want to stay and work, that's fine. If not, you better follow him. Well, I'm staying. Come on, let's get back to work. Card ride. Lots of luck. You're gonna need it. Uh... <laughs> All right, man, let's get to it. Jerry, take your men and finish up down to the southboard. Smitty, you and your men get your tools and follow me. Come on, now, let's go. Like I told you, I've been keeping an eye on him up here. What do you think? Still has a long way to go. Think we ought to help him? No, let's bring him to the side. That little great big Joe Cartwright fire, yeah? Can't cut with them, can you, huh? Cartwright's got all the money. Run you right out of town, huh, Dave? Cartwrights are gonna come in town with a gun and go, tell you. Ain't nothing. I heard Cartwright fired you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he tossed me a crumb and he took it away. I thought he was one of us, but I made a mistake. He belongs up there in that big house. Well, I thought you two were good friends. Me? I ain't got a big house and a stand of timber and a magic name. I'm just riffraff to the Cartwrights. You know, I learned a long time ago that this is the only true friend a man's got. How would you like a lot of these true friends? What's your proposition? $500 now. And $500 when Joe Cartwright forfeits his bond. Think you can do it? Mr. Povey, you just bet on a sure thing. You with me? All the way. Make sure you got them all secured good, Bobby. Right, Joe. Hey, look at that, Jake. Another half a mile and we can start the logs rolling. I can tell you now, Joe. I never thought you'd do it. Yeah, I want to thank you and the men for sticking by me. Thanks. Hey, Brennan! What's the matter? You getting tired? I'm saving my strength to beat your head in when this job's finished. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, you both get a chance when the job's finished. We can all sleep for about three months. Cover me. I'm gonna go take care of that flume. Somebody shoot at you and not do anything about it? You men stay right where you are. I hired you as loggers, not gunmen. There's only another half mile of flume to build. We can make it if we fight them off. Jake, I'm not going to risk the lives of these men just to fill a lumber contract.
I thought it was you. How's it going, son? trouble and I know what to do with. Tell me about it. I don't know what good it'll do to talk about it now. Hmm? Might do some good. I told you my trouble's a time or two. Yeah. Well, I... I made every mistake in the book. I trusted Donovan. Thought I could handle Povey. Well, I handled him all right. They hired some gunmen. They blew up a section of the flume. Anyone hurt? I had one man winged. I told Jake and the men to quit. I, I couldn't ask them to risk their lives. Hey, Joe. You saw your horse out there when we come out of the barn. We've uh, run into a little trouble. What are you going to do, give up? It's not what I want to do. I just don't have any choice. I can't do it alone. Well, Joe, we're still here. If you need us. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do for three or four days. Well, free as a bird. Yeah, I got... But a dozen men sitting around doing nothing but collecting wages. Oh. Yeah, well, let's go, then. <laughs> hey, what a blow, huh? <laughs> there he is. Povey! Crawford! Lieutenant! I'd have been here a little sooner, but I've been out doing a little celebrating. I'm here for the other 500. Well, you almost made it, Donovan. Well, what do you mean by that? That whole Cartwright crew moved out when I blasted that flume. The trouble is, you're only half right. Crawford here went up to check on Cartwright's progress. Well, his crew left, all right. But while you were out celebrating, they've come back. Not only Weber and his crew, but the whole Cartwright family and all their ranch hands. His family? But Joe would never ask them. You just made another mistake. He asked them, all right. Just hold that second 500. I'll get them. You figuring on taking that whole crowd on by yourself? One at a time. You must want that extra 500 awful bad. No. No, it's not the 500. It's a personal thing now. Well, you know, I think Adam's idea will work. Yeah. Boss, Adam, how about getting started on that A-frame right away? Right. Jake, you should take these group of men down to the unfinished lower section and get it finished right away. All right, boys. Let's get going. I better get her blocking falls in camp. I'll get them. You get down there and make sure they get started. Hey, Jake. Tell them thanks for coming back. We're glad to be back, Joe. Hey, uh, how about being foreman for me while I'm gone? Oh, sure, I'd be glad to, boss. <laughs> Family man. What do you want, Dave? Well, now, I thought I wanted some money. But now I want more than that. All right, exactly what is it that you want? 
I wonder what that fine family of yours is going to think when they come up here and find you. Of course, your pa's got two other sons. He won't miss you much. All right, Dave, come on. Come on. this on. I figured I could take you. Finally had to bring your family in, didn't you? That's right, I called them. I guess that's where I made my mistake. I figured they'd let you down. The way my family let me down. Will you knock it off? I'm sick and tired of hearing the way your family lets you down. Did you ever stop to think for one minute maybe you let them down? But you might have let a lot of people down. The only hope you're going to understand you're going to get from Sheriff Coffee. anymore. What do you mean I won't be needing you anymore? You're not the three greatest workers in the world, but I can't beat the price. tranh uh, cây táo và bây giờ chúng mình hãy cùng nhau tô màu bức tranh cây táo này nhé ái là mẹ bây giờ mồm hả mồm rửa mồm 
Bảo xuống bảo không rửa Trả lời xem à, Chị nhớ hả? Chị thấy thằng em có bao nhã ấy Cái nhà lúc diện đâu nhỉ? Nhà lúc nào thì đóng cửa mà cái bà thì xiên bà như cảnh sát khu vực cơ nhớ nhận biết chị em em bảo là cảnh sát khu vực Rồi mình nhá. Không biết ai nói bà ấy, bà ấy cũng tự biết mình thế nào thế nào ấy cả chưa. Nhà cả nhà hôm nay chúng ta sẽ cùng tôi cùng chú Minh Điền đến này và sau đây thì mình sẽ cùng đấu tranh cùng mình nhá. Và và cái cái bà cũng xe ở đây này. Và là cái cảnh sát khu vực mà. <cười> ở trong này là con gái giữ xe à? đâu cái nhà mà giữ xe ô tô mà vâng là bà có bà giữ xe không phải á trông xe không phải á không vợ chồng nhà bà ấy Thế cái à? nhà ở trong bên bên sau bên kia thằng nào hôm trước em đứng ở ngoài bà cứ so so nhìn nhìn em cũng nhìn thôi anh thôi <cười> một bên thì không biết là đứa kia là đứa nào thì mình cũng nhìn lại <cười>
mình vừa tô màu xong uh, một cây táo đang rất là sai quả rất là nhiều quả táo cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video của hướng dẫn tô màu của mình và đừng quên ấn like subscribe kênh để ủng hộ cho mình nhé xin chào